Hi there! In this video I'm going to show you how to create a tournament in Rankedin. The first thing that you need to click on is the create button on the top of the website. Then you click on the tournament button from the submenu and click the create button on the pop-up that appears. This page contains the basic information about the tournament. The first thing that you need to do is set the name for it. The next thing is the ranking. This is optional, so I'll just keep it for now. This means that you can, but you don't have to use the ranking for the tournament. If you don't select the ranking though, players won't get points for their final standing position when the tournament finishes. The next one is the selecting date. The first date, the close sign-in date, defines the date until the tournament is going to stay open so players can join. Start and end date is the period when all of the matches for the tournament are going to be played. An admin can also add regulations for the tournament. Again, this is optional, but it's a good practice to have it. The next thing is choosing the location for the tournament. This can be done manually with filling all of the location fields or it can be auto-filled by Google Maps. After selecting the location, you need to add the courts. This info will be used later on when you schedule the matches. In the advanced options, we've got the option to check if a payment is required for joining the tournament. If you're done filling all of this info, you can click the Create button. As you can see, there are nine steps to be done before starting the tournament. In this, the second step, you can add sponsor logos. This is again optional, but again, in order for the verification, it's good to have it. You can move to the third step, classes. Classes are used to separate different types of players. Take juniors and seniors, for example. So, instead of creating a separate tournament for each, you just add a different class for both. You can set the different playing dates and different ranking levels as well. In this step, you add as many classes as you need. Let's say that you organize a tournament for juniors and seniors. So, in order to split them, you create two classes and after it, the players are joining within their class. An admin can also add the players manually within the proper class. So, you're entering the name for the class, juniors and seniors within this case. You choose the match type and age group for the class and the last thing before adding the class is choosing the playing date. As you can see, the dates between start and end date from the first steps are offered. So. If you need extra dates, the only thing that you need to do is go back to the first step and modify these. I've added two classes, so the next thing I'm going to do is add the players within the classes. As I mentioned before, players can join by themselves or the admin can add them manually within the proper class. If some player wants to join, all he needs to do is go to the event home and click the join button. I'm just going to join the tournament just to show you how to do it. In this step, you select the class that you want to add players to. As you can see, there is already one player joined. That is the one I used to show you how to join. So, you click on the three dots in the right and select Add Players. You search the name of the player and add him or her to her class. I will add players for both classes manually. In this step, you can seed the players manually or you choose one of the seeding templates. In the three dots menu, an admin can also move players between classes or download the list of all added and joined players. If you're done with this step, you go to the close sign step. Because I didn't select the ranking in the first step, I only have an option to close the sign in. Now, let's see what happens if I add ranking within the first step. You see, after adding the ranking, an admin needs to choose the level for both classes. If you are the owner of the ranking, like in this case, you can choose the level, otherwise the owner of the ranking will have to do this before you can close the sign-in. I've explained how to create or modify a level within the ranking in one of the previous tutorials about how to create and use the rankings. 
So, all you need to do is select levels for all the classes and you can close the sign in. After this, players can't join the tournament. So, you move on to the next step, generating the draws. In this step, you can choose a draw type for every class. You've got three options to choose from, these are predefined draws, or you can just use the draw creator. I'll just use the predefined draws for now and will explain you the draw creator within the next videos. I'll choose the Monrad type for the juniors and round robin for the senior class. You notice that you have advanced settings if you choose round robin. This is because in this type of draws, all of the players are matched between each other and there must be a rule on how to generate the final standings. I'll just generate the draws for now. You can notice that after generating the draws, two new buttons are available. Preview and Publish the Draws. If you click on the preview draws, you'll see the generated draws for all of the classes. In this page, you can also substitute players. The other button, Publish Draws, is to publish the draws so the players can see it on their event page and on their profile pages as well. Now, I'm going to publish the draws. If you're done with this step, you're moving to the next step where you can set the time settings. You can select the playing days for every class. The dates shown are the dates selected for the classes in the Classes step. Under the playing dates, you can set the start and end time for playing the matches for the specific day. Also, here you can select how many courts will be used for the day from the date range. In this step, you set the match duration and the break between matches for the players. There are also advanced settings, but I'll explain those within my next tutorials for scheduling the matches. I'm going to save the time settings and go to the next step where I will schedule the matches based on the time settings that I set. All done with the times, I'm scheduling the matches now. It takes some time for the matches to be scheduled. Just refresh the page for a few seconds and you have the matches done. You can drag and drop some match if you need to change the time for it and the schedule is done as well. You can publish the matches so the players will see the match time on their profile and uh, these were the last settings. The tournament can be started now. If you need any help, just contact us and our support team will be happy to assist you. See you within the next tutorials.